Hello world, welcome back to Razer RC. I picked up a Red Cat Kaiju very recently, and the reason I picked one of these up is that they have been making some small updates to the Red Cat Kaiju. I don't think they officially call it a V2 version, but it is definitely got some changes from uh, when this was first released about uh, eight, 10 months ago, uh, just to address some of the uh, weaknesses and flaws we were running into. So I just wanna kinda cover this vehicle, show some running footage, and uh, show you what my thoughts are on it after having been chance to run it. So uh, Red Cat Kaiju, first of all, if you're not familiar, they call it a 1 8 scale 6S monster truck. To me, it's really a 1 10 scale monster truck, pretty much the exact same size as like a Traxxas Max or Arma Creighton 4S or like a Techno MT410. So uh, I think it's a 1 10 scale, but they call it a 1 8 scale officially. I uh, will pop off the body. So the body, everything is exactly the same. No changes there. Uh, reasonably durable, not too bad. Wheels and tires have not changed. Um, I do recommend uh, you know drilling little holes into these things just to get any dirt or wire that it accumulates inside the tires to, to fall out. So vehicle itself, uh, pretty much same layout. Um, I do recommend updating the battery straps. They are a little short, especially for any 6S batteries. They really just would not hold in very well. Forest is still um, slightly on the short side, so I just got some longer battery straps. Comes with a Dean's connector. I did actually swap it out for an IC5 connector uh, because the Dean's is just not that, you know, not gonna pull that many amps. Um, so it's got the WPL uh, 8, what are these called? It's the 8BL uh, 150 amp ESC. So uh, really nice ESC, really nice motor. Uh, it is programmable, so all your hobby wing, uh, you know, programming cards will fit. Motor wise, I think it's like a 42 by 70 can motor. So a little bit on the short end, a little bit on the fat side. Um, it does run pretty warm. Even on 4S, you still get in like the 150 degree range, even on like a fairly cool day like we have here in January. Uh, unfortunately, you cannot gear it any lower. Uh, it's already slammed all the way down as, as small as it can go. So there's no way to fit a shorter pinion gear. So I think that's kind of partly why it runs so uh, hot and why it's so fast. It's a pretty quick uh, vehicle, even on 4S, and it's because they just can't gear it any lower. So a um, little bit of a flaw there, but you know, not much you can do with it that. There's no way to put a longer can in here. Uh, there's just no space. So a uh, nice little on-off switch and a uh, servo up front, a uh, little quick action receiver box. The other thing I want to mention is this is pretty much exactly like a team associated rival MT10 just supersized. So uh, I'm pretty sure the OEM or whoever makes this back in China or wherever, um, they're the exact same company because the layout, everything is nearly identical to an associated uh, rival MT10, which is also a rebranded Helion Avenge uh, 10 MT. So they're all very, very similar, all in the same family of vehicles. Now, changes wise, they did update the upper arms here. I don't know if you can tell, but basically uh, this area right here was kind of beefed up. That was kind of the weaknesses of the original uh, Kaiju. It would tend to break right there, which basically where the rod threads into that upper arm. And then the other thing they did, um, they did retune uh, the suspension a little bit. I did notice uh, from the original Red Cat Kaiju I drove that this one, the rear end, is much, much, much stiffer. Uh, shock piston wise, I think it's a four by one millimeter hole piston. Um, that I don't think has changed, but the shock fluid feels like it's like maybe 50 weight or something, and it's really way too thick for the rear end in my opinion. I put in some 35 weight oil, uh, 32 and a half, 35 weight oil, seems about right to me. Um, gonna do some more uh, tuning. The front is not too bad. Uh, I'll probably uh, continue with that for now, maybe make some minor changes, but they don't really tell you what the actual uh, weight fluid is in the vehicle, so no way to tell um, what you should put in, but that's what I would recommend, somewhere around 35 weight in the rear and then the other thing that seems to have been changed is the out drives are no longer splaying out so I did have some problems uh, with the original Red Cat Kaiju uh, where basically you needed to put ball bearings or something around the out drive so they didn't like open up and eventually break this has been holding up so far we'll have to see to know for sure but uh, so far yeah it seems like it's running okay so it seems like they updated the materials in the out drive that seems to be like the major problem oh and then the other issue is uh, the bumpers tended to break on the V1s. Um, I don't think the design has changed. It looks pretty much the same, 
but I've taken some really nasty like 20 foot jumps straight into the front bumper, smashed directly into that thing and it hasn't broken yet or even cracked or anything. So I wonder if they just changed kind of the plastics on that or maybe uh, the material or something because it does seem a little more flexible and durable and at least so far hasn't broken so uh, yeah that's pretty much it from what i can see on the red cat kaiju uh, still has the center differential you know all the metal drive shafts everything it seems to run really really well other changes i would recommend i think the pistons are a little bit too small four by one point hole millimeter pistons might be a little on the small side but um, as long as you run lighter weight fluid you can get to run a uh, pretty pretty good overall so yeah uh, check out this running video oh in terms of breakages I did have one problem which is that I broke uh, a shock piston in the rear so somewhere about halfway through the running um, I noticed the rear end was just kind of flopping around a lot like when you see it land it like smacks the rear end super hard and then bounces off and then even just over flat ground you see the rear end just like the shock moving up and down like that really fast so um, yeah the shock piston broke not really sure how that happened maybe I hyper extended uh, an arm or something not really sure so I did have to repair that as well as change out uh, the Eclipse so that cost me I think about 25 bucks or so to get the shock piston part so uh, that was the only breakage I've had so far and I took some really nasty crashes as you'll see in the video um, but it seems to be holding out really well so super impressed with the Red Cat Kaiju the last thing on the radio uh, this is my first time really owning the RCR 2CE. Uh, it's a rebranded Flysky, I think like FSGT2E or something like that. Um, it's okay, not the worst radio. It does actually have some adjustments here uh, inside. So all your uh, reversing and then uh, the trims and door rates and stuff. So that's okay. Uh, response wise, it does, it's, it's a little on the slow side. I won't lie. Um, performance wise, it's not really the best but uh, it's adequate, I guess. So uh, yeah, overall, um, running uh, really well. I'm gonna be doing some more uh, running with this and uh, probably doing a shootout with uh, the other middleweight uh, category vehicles like the Traxxas Max, the uh, Techno MT410, etc. cetera. So uh, yeah, check out this running footage and don't forget to hit the like, share, and subscribe buttons. I look for more videos soon.